We're coming back to you here. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about leasing. So pretty much there's um, there's two really aspects, there's two different aspects of leasing. So we're gonna talk about both of them. One, it's how to lease an apartment as the realtor, so you're representing the client. And of course, how to lease the apartment as a leasing agent. So pretty much one representing the community, the other one representing the client. Now, obviously both are, are gonna have their different levels of complexity, but we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about what it's like to represent a community. So what is your job when you're a leasing agent? So you're presenting you know, one of the major brands, uh, whether you do luxury or, or regular apartment homes, I mean, it's all really gonna depend on your market and of course in what, you know, what area of the country you really live in. So leasing apartments and representing a community, I've you know, successfully done over 400, um, you know, if you want to take it specific, like I really couldn't because I've done a lot. Um, my first community was 418 units. Um, I didn't do all of them, but I did do a large, a large percentage. I've done a 289 apartment community, and I'm hoping to, um, to do another one of, um, of 719 units. But of course, we'll see how everything progresses. So what it's like when you're representing a community. So you're a leasing agent, right? So you work in a building, it's a, it's a nice building, a client comes and, and what happens? So regularly, when a client walks in through the door, um, maybe they might have a realtor, maybe they don't. You know, our jobs are to pretty much, qual always the same, qualify the client, find their needs, see what they're looking for, and of course, encourage them to com complete an application. Now, when you are leasing apartments, so a client walks in, obviously you wanna sit down with them, talk a little bit about what they're looking for, what their needs are, if they have a pet or not, how many adults are gonna be occupying an apartment. Of course, because occupancy, um, you know, there is a, a limit of how many people can, can occupy, um, whether it's a one bedroom, a two bedroom, here in the state of Florida, it's a rule of thumb that it's a maximum of two people per bedroom, but sometimes that can also switch a little bit when there's like a den area, um, you know, always like look at um, look at your local ordinances, look at the local laws, and and of course go with that, right? I'm not an attorney and I'm not qualified in every in all 50 states, just here in the state of Florida. So you know, you sit down with the client, you know, you walk through their needs, they tell you, oh my God, you know, I'm I'm coming with a, I'm coming with, um, uh, you know, I'm coming with a pet, dog or cat, um, you know, have X number of cars. So I need parking spots, you know, you want to qualify the client. After that, you know, you walk them to the apartment home, you show them the apartment, you usually show a model unit. Communities for the most part usually have one, if not two model apartments that are furnished that you can always use as a closing tool to be able to, you know, to close the client. So, you know, you walk into the apartment home, you walk into the unit, you really want to pay attention for things when you have availability, right? Like if you have a lot of vacant units, you want to hear what is the client looking for? What are their needs? I usually ask what's important to them, like what's a must have. And I always ask if there's any particular size of furniture that they're trying to fit. Now, the reason for that is, okay, if you know, you're looking for, you tell me you're looking for a small apartment. Oh, sorry. We'll, we'll fix that in the edit. Probably won't. All right, so let's say you're, um, you look, you, the client tells me that they're looking for a particular size apartment, right? But then I ask, hey, but are you trying to fit in any particular set of furniture? And they're like, yeah, well, I'll have a huge L-size couch or a king-size bed. Things that maybe the client won't think about right then and there as they're looking at the unit. But obviously you want to ask because if it doesn't, you know, their furniture doesn't fit, it might present a challenge once they complete their application. Because maybe they get excited, that can, you know, cause for them to call, cancel, and of course, once you lease, you, you really don't want to, you know, you don't want to, you don't want a cancellation in your hands. So, okay, you show them the apartment, they fall in love, they're like, oh my God, let's complete the application. So, you usually take them downstairs or you take them to a lobby, take them to an office, and they're able to complete their application. Income requirements really vary in the state of Florida, but again, a rule of thumb is that you generate at least three times of the monthly amount on a gross basis. So, of course, it's going to be pre-tax. Um, usually community apartment homes are going to um, do a background and credit check. Depends what different company they can use. They can use um, Yardy, they can use one side real pages. Well, not Yardy, that's a CRM, but one side real pages. Um, and they would have a decision. Pretty much you screen the applicant, check the background, the credit. Uh, and one of the big things is of course the rental history. 
Now, a community is always going to encourage you to apply. But of course, there are certain things that present challenges as you move forward in the application process. So one of those things, of course, is going to be um, rental history. You know, some communities post the rental history, some don't. Um, and these are things that are very strong when you complete an application to an apartment community. If you owe another community, that can present a challenge. If you owe a utility, so water, cable, electricity, that may also present a challenge. And the reason for that is communities don't necessarily like you owing to companies that are relevant to the community space, to the to the real space, to the real estate industry, right? So not just the brick and mortar itself, but also the utilities that come with it. So those are big things. Um, you know, you complete a screening. Usually at this point, this is for apartment communities. But if you're dealing with an independent condo, a condo association, usually can vary a little bit. Application, kind of range. I've seen the regular from $100 to $150. Administrative fees, you know, you might find some, maybe not. Um, it really depends. But usually there is a, you do have to complete an application for the association. So in these things, it might vary a little bit. Apartment communities can usually turn around an application rather fast, 48, 72 hours, depending on how fast the applicant or your client is able to get that paperwork. However, uh, condo associations might take a little longer. Sometimes they might need to, well, it, it really depends, to be honest with you. They might have to go through an approval process. They might actually have to get together and complete a vote. They might have to get together, complete a vote, and then host an interview. These are all things that I've had to go through, and they can vary in time lengths. It could be three days the shortest, again, 42 to 78 out, 72 hours. So 48 to 72 hours, excuse me. I've seen it take two weeks for a condo association. I've seen it take a month and have to take a vote on the client, and they have to meet with the client and be able to get to know them, the interview process, right? So. All these things kind of vary depending on where you're standing. But of course, if you're representing the community again, you really want to get proof of income. Again, rule of thumb that they generate at least three times of the monthly amount. Last two pay stubs are always the best thing. Um, some communities request last year's taxes with those pay stubs to kind of see that work history has been is established. Um, sometimes you can use bank accounts. Rule of thumb is usually three, the past three months bank accounts. Lately, I have been seeing in some places the past six months bank accounts. Um, W-2s, of course, and an offer letter. Usually, if you use an offer letter, of course, it has to be signed. Uh, so it has to be executed and it has to have, you know, a, a prompt starting date. Like it can't start nine months from now, right? It'll have to start soon. And with that, usually you correlate it with last year's tax. So as you can see, leasing an apartment from the community standpoint may seem in the, in the surface that it's not that difficult. However, it does present the same layer of challenges that representing a condo association or even representing the client may present. You have to deal with people. At the end of the day, this is a people business. And there are usually guidelines on what you know can be approved and what can't. But usually things are also kind of done in a case by case basis. You can see different hiccups with credit, background criminal checks, rental history, and of course all of the above are going to be things that present a challenge in the application. Sometimes, you know, a client walks in, loves the apartment, completes their application, and they might be moving the same day. I've had same day movements, people that are very qualified. So you really have to take things in a case by case basis. Can't really assume, you can't really judge. You have to take the application, fair housing, um, and move forward and go from there. Now, again, these, this might seem a little bit easy on the surface, but as you do work for a community, as you are moving through the motions, you're gonna find that you know it does so has its, its challenges and its own layer of complexity. So that's pretty much gonna be for it's gonna be it for today, guys. Um, Rodrigo, pretty much signing out. 
I wanted to give some some value and some input on pretty much what the rental process is. And of course, stay tuned for the next video in which I'll talk about what it's like when you're representing a client, invoices, W-9s, um, you know, um, the whole shebang, broker registration forms, and of course, how it's like when you're representing a client for a, that's applying to a condo association. You know, so there are different things, you know, usually, the lease is completely different. The contract is completely different. Um, you know, you should have to make an offer, and then actually, the other um, the, the other agent's the one that drafts the contract. But that's something that we'll talk in the next video. So until then, stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe. And Rodrigo signing out.